Talk to me about brawly legs. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> <You're> still, <laughs> who I know this was many years ago. <laughs> no, because that's a weird thing about you. And we can talk yeah. about that too, is that there's all these documentaries about you. Yeah. And it's like, I watched one and then I went to watch another one mm -hmm. and it was like exactly the same. And I'm like, holy yeah. f like, like these have like a lot of views and they're exactly the same. That's kind of crazy. Yeah. I call them speculation, uh, speculation stints, but, um, the whole Brawley Lake shit happened. It was basically through Street Fighter. Mm. So me always would think of the most wild shit to say about somebody. So it's strategic. So um, I was playing on Twitch, and this is like 2015, 14. I'm playing the game, right? He comes to my stream trolling. I'm like, all right, whatever. He beats me. He goes on Twitter like, yo, low ticket, I could teach you. I could coach you how to play Street Fighter. So me, I just dig into my nostalgia bag. I'm like, you know what? Hmm. And I look at him, and I just dig into my nostalgia bag, and I say, you know what, Krang. And I just went on Twitter, and I was like, I called him Krang from Ninja Turtles. <laughs> and I just. The, the brain. It's like, yeah, it's like, like a, a brain in a, in a, like, bubble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> man, Twitter went crazy over that. And then to this day, I still hear about it, you know, obviously. But, yeah, to this day, I still hear about it. See, my thing is, is like, because I recently got in a little beef with a Chicago drill rapper, mm -hmm. and he, like, dissed me. But this is a dude who like got shot in the head yeah. and like shows signs of it. Mm. So I immediately went to that. It's yeah. Like, you know, which I understand, you know, it's kind of a low blow or whatever. But it's like, I just feel like if somebody has like a something clearly wrong with them physically, people then are not able to perceive the fact that you dissing them is not any different than them dissing you. And like, yeah, granted, if you were to just go from nothing to dissing Krang or whatever, like mm -hmm. that would be offensive. But if there was a, a reason for you to be attacking back, yeah. you got to work with what you got. And yeah. a lot of times a disability is what you got. That's true. Everything's <laughs> rebuttal. Like anything you see me say on the internet is rebuttal. Like mm -hmm. I literally am responding. Somebody's just not in my chat. You know what? I'm going to fuck your mom. I'm going to do this, do that, do that. Like, nah, everything's been rebuttal. Like any clip you see is the clip in the context is somebody in my chat saying something and I just say some shit back. Mm. Yeah. So if I do it now, it's more so just for entertainment. Like I don't, man, people say shit in my chat 24 seven, but I just don't really respond like that anymore. Mm. I like just, just for a while factor and nostalgia, I'll just pick something out and say something. That's basically it. But everything I used to respond to every fucking thing. That's where the clips came from. Mm. Yeah. I respond to everything. Right, because the more popular you get, the more impossible it is to actually have those reactions to. Yeah, man, uh, you you can't defeat the internet. That's one thing I had to learn. You can't defeat the internet. Right. Yeah, once once you're there, that's basically it. It's a sealed deal. Right. What um, it's kind of like a a big conversation in the culture these days. But mm -hmm. have you ran into problems with people being offended by your statements and opinions on trans people? Uh, I mean, it got me banned, like, in 2020, uh, March 2020. On YouTube, or? Nah, just, like, from the community, like, uh, uh with the gaming company Capcom. Oh, really? Like, so, yeah, I'm, like, banned from Evo, which is, like, a big gaming shit at the end of the and year. And what did you say that got them to react this way? I didn't know Camp Capcom would be on that. Yeah, so it went viral, because, um, so the person was trolling me in Street Fighter or whatever, and, you know, I was still in my hothead shit, and I basically told them to, uh, to basically, they didn't go through the full surgery you're not a real trans, snip your shit, morph it in, you know, shove it in your shit, turn it into actual pussy, basically. <laughs> and that shit, it went viral for the wrong reasons, and I got banned from, like, anything that you can compete fighting game-wise, I got banned for that. Right. Yeah, so, you know, years later, I'm like, yo, it's three years, am I still banned? Like, I got fans that want to see me. Like, I don't care about gaming, but I would like to pull up just for fans. But, uh, I mean, I got, I would, I would say I didn't give flack as bad as I thought I was because I already knew people who were trans. So they knew me already and they knew I was just like fucking around through some Street Fighter shit, but I mm. just was off the hinges. They were like, I've interacted with him. I've like talked to him at a, you know, an event. Like I'm trans, like he's never shown those type of signs. So. <laughs> to me, that opinion that you expressed there is kind of like mm -hmm. a, a sort of nuanced one that doesn't really seem that offensive. It's like, yeah. you know, trans people from having my conversations with them, I realized that like they very much judge other trans people based on how well they pass and how sincere their effort to appear like the other gender. That's, that's 
it's not that out of the ordinary. I, I don't feel like it would be impossible to hear a trans person having that statement and saying, you know, get your fucking dick chopped off if you're really about that life. I mean, if you're trans, you could say that, but if you're not, <laughs> yeah. like, if I'm some random black guy just yelling, you yeah. know, it's going to be looked at it all type of ways. But I mean, I even have trans fans. They're like, oh, yeah, I'm a big fan, blah, blah, blah. They, I mean, so it never really stuck. Like, I was never really labeled, like, transphobic because people knew I wasn't transphobic. They but just basically seen one little thing. Did Capcom relent and let you back in? Nah, not yet. I tried really? to get unbanned. I was, like, DMing hella people because I was trying to go to Evo last year just for fun. Mm -hmm. And, um, shit, it looks like I'm still banned. Really? Yeah, so... I don't know. I'll try again next year, and we'll see what happens. Do you think the fighting game community actually is woke, or is this like a company with power over the community basically trying to enforce an ideolo ideological thing on these unwilling participants? I mean, it's, it's more of a code of conduct thing for them um, mm. and an alienation issue. Like, in the fighting game community, there's a lot of people who resonate with, you know, different labels. What do you call them? Uh... I don't know. They, she. Uh, pronouns. Yeah, and pronouns. Yeah. Yeah. So there's a lot of people that resonate with different things. Um, I guess I could see that because people who choose to sort of like submerge themselves in this fantasy world and play this game and stay in their room all the time quite often might be the kind of people who have a hard time fitting in in the real world. Is mm -hmm. that uh, Would that make sense? That makes sense, yeah. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of people basically don't go outside. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people that just watch people stream. Like. I only watch people stream for homework. So if I'm watching like academics or, I mean, I only watch knowledgeable shit now, but yeah. I'll tap in, I'll tap into Kai and, you know, just to see what he's up to. Like I do homework, like I study the game, mm. which is why I guess while I'm able to flourish a little bit, while like there's so many bigger people in the game these days, I'm like, damn, you guys are still fucking with me. Like damn near 10 years later. Mm. Like, what am I doing? They're like, man, you're just true to yourself. Yeah, that's the weird thing about becoming successful for making content is that it becomes very, very difficult for you to like really have that much time to consume other people's content and yep. your style of consuming it becomes different where it's like, I could never imagine watching an entire academics four hour fucking stream. Mm -hmm. I only am able to engage with the clips because it's just like, I don't, I mean, I'm usually busy all fucking day and yeah. I would like to be like more of a normal content consumer but instead, I like kind of have to be like real careful about what I'm willing to spend an hour listening to because mm -hmm. of the fact that my time is, you know, I, in, in any given week, if I'm doing four or five interviews, that's at least a couple of hours per interview that I need to spend getting ready for that interview. So I'm not able to just be somebody who listens to four fucking Joe Budden podcasts a week. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the only person's stream I could say I watch straight through is like an act stream because mm. it's more so like. It's not just me watching somebody stream. I'm, like, learning shit, too. I'm right. learning different trades of the game as far as, like, the whole media aspect. So, to me, if it's knowledgeable, I'll listen to it in the background. I'll be at the gym, like, oh, let me put on academic stream. or yeah. So, I'll just do it like a knowledgeable thing. I'm getting ready. I pop it on. But as far as, like, me just, like, sitting there, just, just, yeah, I just... I don't have the time. Me watching Axe content, honestly, yeah. and I, I hate to give him this much credit, but it, it feels like work in a way because when I watch him and see his level of like preparedness when it comes to talking about different topics, like I'm often wowed by how much knowledge he has about the most mundane fucking topics. I'm watching, like I've just watched him talk about Blueface and Krishan Rock maybe a month ago and I was just like <laughs> I was just wowed by like yeah. I cannot believe how much fucking knowledge and analysis he has for this whereas for me it's like I'm kind of a passive consumer of that mm -hmm. shit where I'll watch the viral clips and stuff but I haven't watched every episode of the Zeus show and I you know it's like I don't really have like a fully thought out um thought process about exactly like what each of their motivations is and stuff like that. And it's like, I do, I do kind of view him as somebody who's completely submerged in the culture mm -hmm. that I feel like I'm a little different in the sense that I'm watching shit about politics and I'm watching shit about video games and streamers. And like, I'm a little bit more like well-rounded in terms of what I pay attention to, but he's like mega hip hop focused. So yep. his, his viewpoint on any given topic is like razor sharp. That's why I'm watching it. I'm like, mm. man, I'm, I put on academics. That's homework mm. for me because the same shit that's going on academic stream, when I go live, they're asking me about it. Right. Like, yo, did you hear about this? Like most of my stream now is just is media-based. Like 
the, the whole five hours or I might spend like five hours going over media, mm -hmm. depending on what's popping for the day. And the rest, I could just fuck around and go for random topics. But yeah, so to me, if I watch a streamer, it's homework. Like I need to be in the know of what's going on. That's, in, that's what anything though. Mm -hmm. Like if you're a basketball player and all you got is hook shots and you don't know step backs and things like that, you don't know the new trades of the game, how do you stay sharp? Mm, yeah, definitely. so.